reason I grabbed it is because, one, there's no bikes and bikes here right now. Let's be real. The pandemic has caused a lot of people to get cheap and ride, which is great. But entry level bikes are hard to come by right now. So, this bike was 350 bucks at Costco. They claim it's a mountain bike. I'm going to load it up and see what I think. But I think for somebody that wants to, to get into sport, try it out for cheap, and has realistic expectations of riding on, you know, like rail trails or even, you know, like being in mountain bike trails, I think this is actually going to be a decent bike. All right, so Donald, what do you think about the thing? So the, the North Rock XC27. I don't know. You know, I'm, I've, always, I've always gone off of what other people have said about these bikes, and, 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 my, and I've worked on them for years and years and years. But it's rare that I actually get one in that's one, new in a box, and two, that we can assemble it right, put the right kind of grease in it, put the lube the chain properly, adjust things properly, and start it off, start its life off actually being built the right way. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build this thing up the right way, mm -hmm. give it a fair, have it give, give it a fair shake, and we're gonna go from that. So I don't know, let's open it and see. Uh, so, so far, So far, it's, it's not bad. I mean, it's like any other bike that we would get from any of the other manufacturers. It looks like it's, it's truly put together, 90% put together. When it says on the box, it says it's like 90% assembled. It, it is, it's 90% assembled, but it's far from tuned. It's not adjusted. It, uh, if you took the bike out right now and you rode it and you tried a mountain bike with it, it would probably, not last very long. Yeah, so in the past when we've seen these bikes, they, uh, I don't think they use grease on these bikes. I think that's how they cut costs, to be honest. No, I, I mean, the seat post right now is completely dry. Just pulling it out. So if you built this bike from home and you didn't know how to build a bike, just starting off, you're not gonna have grease in the seat post. You're not gonna grease the pedals. You're not gonna do things like that. You're just gonna kind of slot it together with whatever tools that you had. If you had American Standard, you probably would use the American Standard wrenches in the head, in the stem and stri start stripping out the bolts immediately. By the way, most of these bikes are metric. Actually, all these bikes are metric, so don't do that. So far, it doesn't look too bad. No, it's an aluminum frame. I mean, it looks like an older style aluminum bike that we would have had maybe, you know, early 90s. You know, it would have probably been a decent frame for, for a, a bike that was built in the early 90s. Yeah. Oh, so I just realized it's got Max's tires on it. It's got Max's icon on it. So it has real tires, not just like the uh, cheap no-names. Well, it has, it has the OEM version of those tires. Yeah. So, so what's, what's the difference? So the big difference between a lot of OEM stuff is you're going to get the same tread pattern, but you're probably not going to get like a, uh, you're, it's going to be a wire bead, same tread pattern. It's not going to be multi-layers uh, as far as the, uh, the rubber. So you're gonna have basically one layer of rubber, a steel bead, and the same tire pattern as you would see on like the higher end one. So this tire probably goes up to around the $90 range. This is probably a $20 tire retail. Mm, okay, okay. So you're gonna miss, a, you're gonna be missing a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot of the um, features that you would get in the higher tire uh, with the same tread pattern on the lower tire. Okay. I'm gonna ask this straight up. You know, uh, in the bike scene, everybody likes to talk about these reflectors right here. What's your, what's your two cents on those? And what are if, we gonna do with those? If, if you're riding at night, it, you need to have something. Where if you don't have a light, if you don't have uh, something that, that could get someone's attention, you need to have it. I think what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna ride this bike the way it's intended to be ridden, off-road, as a mountain bike, to its limits, but not over its limits. And uh, I think we're probably gonna take these off. I put some grease inside the, the seat post. Again, I wanna try to give this thing a fair shake. So we're gonna check the bearings on, on the wheels, check the bearings in the headset, check the bearings in the bottom bracket if, if, there, are, if there are bearings that we can check. And we're gonna go from there. Let's put it in the stand. It's heavy. <laughs> it's not light. It's definitely not a light bike. And I would even say it's, 
it's heavier than our a bicycle bicy, bicy, bicycle shop quality bike. A bicycle shop quality bike, it's definitely heavier than a bicycle shop quality bike. An entry level one. You can tell that it's that it's that strange level between ultra low end and bicycle quality. It's right in the middle. So when I look at it, I, yeah, it has Shimano on it. Yeah, it has Maxes on it. It has, you know, decent components as far as the brands, but it's the lowest spec of all those components. So if if you're just shopping and you look at it and say, yeah, it has Shimano on it. A lot of people were drawn to things that say Shimano because from what they were to told, Shimano's really good. They don't, tell what, they don't tell the full story. They don't say, yeah, Shimano's really good, but there is a very low end Shimano. Maxes are really good, but there is a very low end Maxes. And if you put enough low end stuff on one bike, you get a low end bike. It's all about that name recognition though. It's all about that name recognition. So what do you think, Corey? What do you think you, we're going to get out of this? What do you think, uh, without trying to break it and actually riding it like an entry-level mountain bike would be ridden? So what what are you, what are you predicting? I'm thinking if you ride this thing as intended, as you know, an entry-level mountain bike, I think it's going to be okay. I think if you take it to a spot that is either like a rail trail or like crushed gravel or really just any kind of green trail, I think it's gonna do okay as long as you're not riding it as a more aggressive rider. I, yeah. I think people get too caught up in, you know, price points and just be a little bit, I don't know, bougie about things that they forget that at the end of the day, it's a bicycle, right? Yeah, well, I, I always say, I, even to the customers that come in, I tell them all the time, I think there's, I think there's different types of customers and different wants and different needs, right? Mm -hmm. Not one want and not one need is better than the next guys. Yeah. So if your need and your want is to have a ultra high end race bike that costs fourteen thousand dollars, you know that's that's all good if you can afford it. Yeah. But uh, not everybody can afford those type of things, but they still want to get into cycling, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not and, a bike or, you would take to an EWS or downhill. Right. Or or even explore cycling. Um, you know, a $300 price range for this bike, I think that's a fair price range, you know what I mean? Yeah, to try it Especially out. Especially when you're not, um, there's no shop, no bicycle shop bikes available. Yo, this, uh, this wheel bearing's already feeling a little crunchy. Oh, yeah. All right, all right. This all right. is exactly what we're, what we're talking about, so. Just from the, from out of the box. These bearings already feel notchy. They feel bad. The, the, the seal on the, on the hub is actually kind of sitting off. So I'm going to open this up. I'm going to adjust it properly and see if I can get it to feel a little better than what it does right now. So again, this is why it's important that you take your bike into a bike shop. Whether you buy it from Costco's, whether you buy it from um, Walmart or anything else like that, you still need to take it into a bike shop and have it adjusted properly, have it lubed properly, have it greased properly, if you want to give it a fighting chance to, to survive. Um, I don't know what the percentage of, of what this, how, oh my goodness, Corey, feel the headset. Bruh. It is the notchiest headset I've ever felt. That feels like a uh, headset that I've taken off after riding in rain for a year. All right, so how's that front feeling? Front feels way better. I got the brakes not rubbing now. Mm -hmm. Nice and tight. Nice, nice. bottom bracket is a sealed bearing bottom bracket and it seems like it's pretty smooth. Nice. The chain rings are not the truest, but again par for for the for course when it comes to a bike of this of this uh at this level. So when you say the chain rings aren't true, what does that mean? They actually they actually have wobble back and side to side this way. So when I'm spinning them inside the inside the frame, 
I can actually vis visibly see them moving this way and in and out. It's going to make it for me to, to, to adjust this front derailleur precisely. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make it pretty difficult because the chain rings aren't precise enough to adjust anything 100%. So out of the box, you're not going to get a bike that's going to shift 100% perfect with things that aren't 100% true or to spec. Are we going to put these pedals on for right now? <sighs> I don't know. So that begs the question. So out the box, that's what it comes with. But like I said earlier, all bikes come with those. And that's honestly the first thing we recommend replacing on a mountain mm -hmm. bike. You're going to take I, a mountain bike. And, and if we're going to be riding this bike, those are for definitely. safety reasons, I, I think we need to get rid of these. All right. So the one thing we're going to have to compromise on are the pedals. I think like a $50 set of race face chesters are similar. I think that I think that's valid. I think that's fair. So these are uh, at a price point of like $50. Really worth the money. Um, contact points on the bike. You have to have control where your contact points are. So you, your feet, you, you can't have your feet slipping off the pedals. Your, 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 your grips, you have to have good grips, good set of gloves. You can't have your hands slipping off the handlebar. These are all contact points. And uh, what these, those points are what keeps you from crashing or not crashing a lot of times. So you'll have, like Corey said, these are the pins. These are adjustable pins. You can actually, these will actually dig into the bottom, the soft rubber of your shoe. Where, where this one is just like a cut out piece of metal. If you look at the size of the pedals also, much, much bigger platform. Believe it or not, this is a bigger pedal, but it's made of like a, a resin or a com composite, and it's a lot lighter than this one. Um, on top of the pedal design itself, the, the axles that the pedals have on them. Uh, a higher end pedal is going to have it like a chrome molly axle or a stainless axle, and some even higher end ones have titanium axles, where this is just like your hardened steel. And that's, I think that's where the weight, the weight difference comes in. Although it's smaller and still made of plastic and everything, it's just, uh, it's just heavier. So what you want to do is, again, anytime you're, you're putting metal into metal, you want to make sure that you, uh, you grease the surface. Even the pedals going into the bike, put some grease inside there. Uh, all right, the rear brake was a little off, but quick adjustment, that was good, so. Um, brakes good. I got it. Adjust the brakes. Ooh, that thing is small. Yeah, it's a small yes. bike for sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. our original plan might have to be tweaked. I don't know if I can ride this thing, to be honest, and give it a fair shake. So, for reference, I'm 6'3", I ride extra large bikes, and this thing is uh, it's between a small and medium. So. Yeah, I'd say definitely between a, a small and a medium. The top tube even looks kind of short on it. Why don't, we, why, don't we put a, why don't we put a beginner rider on it? Beginner rider or somebody, you know, a little more timid. I think that'd be fair. I think yeah. that'd be fair. We'll put a we'll put a beginner rider on it and uh we'll take it to a trail that's that's suitable for this type of bike and that and that type of rider. Oh uh, yes, the other reason why you should take this bike to a bike shop or a properly trained and experienced mechanic. So there's no way of me knowing how much pressure I'm putting on these balls with this. But this torque wrench right here, you'll know exactly how much uh, uh, force is going on those balls. That clicking sound is telling us we've got it dialed down to the proper setting on these. Cog. Oh, God. Hold so on. It's, it, it's, it's done. I tightened it down, so you probably won't be able to see it again. But it's a, pre, it's a free wheel, and it wasn't all the way... Uh, spun on so the first couple of pedal strokes it's it tightened it up no form of dampening or control over the over the front shock but again like i said it's kind of par for course right even on our lower end bikes you have very few adjustments on on the low on the shocks as far as preload or, or rebound um i'm i'm actually i'm actually shocked it's nicer than i thought it was going to be yeah, it looks, it's, it, it's a good looking bike. It's nicer than I thought it was going to be for $300. But we're, you're, you're $200 off of our price point. Our, is our price point better? Is, is it worth $200 more? Yeah, I, I definitely see some differences in it that, that would 
justify it being two hundred dollars more. One, the biggest thing is it's per, it's there, it's professionally installed. Okay, so if you took this bike into a bike shop and had it built out of a out of a box and had it uh, adjusted properly, it's going to run you one hundred and sixty bucks right there. So you're really close to the price point of one of our bikes just based off of that alone. And then um, the fitting, the sizing, the service that goes along with buying a bicycle shop quality bike. So you're gonna get a properly fitted bike versus a one size fit all bike. Um, yeah, I, I, would, I would still say that there's value to this bike for sure. Um, but it's getting close to what you would get at the lower end bicycle shop quality bike. Exactly. And back to the context of uh, getting bikes right now with COVID, uh, you kind of have to do what you got to do if you want to get a bike this year, right? Yeah. Especially uh, at the lower end entry level, which is just unfortunately hard for all of us. We can't get bikes for people that just want to try the sport out. Yeah.